Pam Dyson. I'm the founder and the director of the St. Louis Center for Play Therapy Training. In my playroom today, as I am every day, and I have a play therapy tip that I would like to share with you today. I'm always working with children to teach them or encourage them to understand their emotions, recognize how what places in their body they feel those emotions, the intensity of those emotions, and sometimes how small or how large those particular emotions can feel. So it's all a part of helping children develop a vocabulary of emotions. Tools can sometimes be helpful in that regard. I recently ran across these delightful little colored maracas at the dollar bin at Target. It's been a while since I found them, so I, I doubt they still have them available, but you may be able to find them somewhere else or something similar to them. When I saw them, I immediately decided that these would be awesome for young children especially, but maybe even for older children, to use a maraca to show me how they would feel about something. What, is it, what does it sound like? Is it like this? Medium? Large? What is it? So I drew some filling faces on these. This one happens to be an angry face. So if a child was sharing with me an experience when they felt angry, say for example, someone at school teased them and it really made them angry when they got teased. I could ask them to tell me how angry they felt when that other child teased them by shaking this maraca. So it might be something like this, or it might be something like this. See what I mean? Kind of helps you gauge the intensity of it. So we could do it with feelings of anger, we could do it with feeling sad. When, when our friend doesn't want to play with us, and usually they do, but today they decided they didn't want to play with us, and we feel sad. How sad are we? A little sad? Maybe medium sad? Maybe a really, really lot of sad? Sometimes children can understand. How, can, we can find a way for children to help us understand their emotions and the intensity of them by looking at them from the perspective of the, was it a small feeling? Was it medium? Was it a large? Was it extra large? That type of thing. We can also talk about how sometimes we might be able to feel more than one feeling at a time. We might be sad and mad at the same time when our friend doesn't want to play with us. So we might be able to shake both of them. These would also be great in a group because everybody in the play therapy group could have a respective maraca. And you could share a social story. You could make one up. Maybe the children themselves could kind of create the story, a story that has a beginning and a middle and an ending. And each time a feeling um, is shared in that story, whoever has that respective um, maraca could shake it to, a, uh, to go along with the storyline and the intensity of the emotion that's felt. So I think that would be kind of a fun way for children to, to work on, on identifying their emotions and they would probably really, really enjoy it. A similar idea would be to use bells. Different sizes of bells. Bells are usually pretty affordable. You can find them in a lot of craft stores. Right now it's November. Holiday items are out. So this would be a good time to go into the craft stores and check out all the different sizes of bells that they might have. I have four different sizes here. I attached a little piece of ribbon to each one to give it a little handle, make it easier for children to hang on to. And we could do a similar thing as we did with the maracas. We could talk about feelings and which one of these might represent an, an angry feeling. Would it be this great big one and you felt this way? Which one might be kind of feeling kind of sad about something? Maybe it would be a much smaller bell with a much uh, softer sound to it. So if you can't find maracas, you could probably find some bells and do a similar thing. I think these are fun, useful ideas. I've used them with kids. They really do seem to enjoy them. Um, and I just remembered, I also in my playroom have these little egg shaker maracas. You could do a similar thing with those as well. So, um, if you don't have access to, to maracas and you can't find them and they're too expensive and they don't fit your budget, come Easter time when the little Easter eggs get put out, the little plastic ones you can pull apart and you can put prizes inside, you could put some beans or rice, probably beans because if they broke, beans would be easier to clean up than rice, I'm just thinking. You could tape them shut so that um, little ones wouldn't be tempted to pull them apart. So you could make your own. Maybe you could put a small amount of beans in one and that way it would be a little less intense and then some could have a lot more beans to make it a little more um, intense. So um, use your imagination to figure out how you could use that. So if you like this idea 
and you'd like to learn more, you can always find more play therapy tips on my YouTube video channel. I also put them on Pinterest. I share them on my Facebook page. And if you're wondering how you can find me in all of those different places, go to stlplaytherapy.com. And right there on the home page, there's all the social media buttons. So you can click on any of those and it'll take you right over to where I am on all of those sites and you can connect with me. So if you see me on Facebook and you like something, um, I love it when people click like, but I really like it when they make a comment, when they ask a question, when they um, share something that they've come up with, because I learn so much from all of you. So I love connecting with all of you. So please connect with me in one of those various places. Um, because in our play therapy world, sometimes we can feel kind of isolated and alone in the work that we do. So reaching out through social media is a wonderful way to be connected, get to know other play therapists, and um, find some valuable resources along the way. So I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.